we're just in review. Um, we challenged the players to play a complete game, and I thought we did a much better job of that in this last game. Um, now that we're back in SEC play, I think it's uh, time that we build on uh, that, build on the momentum, um, play faster, be more crisp, practice better, play with confidence, use the right technique, uh, not talk about paying attention to detail or being casual or uh, finishing or any of those things. But uh, and if we you know, want to be the team that we're capable of being. I think it's important for everybody to to buy into that and do that. Um, you know, SEC's a tough league, and every game you play in this league is an important game, as this game will be against Kentucky. So uh, I know you, you all got the players of the week. And uh, the injury update here, Damian Harris is still going to be day-to-day. Um, probably won't do much today. Uh, I think our Darius Stewart and Robert Foster will both still be listed as day-to-day and um, questionable for this game. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward to uh, homecoming, playing at home. Um, hopefully we'll have a great crowd that's very enthusiastic and excited about uh, this game. And I know our players will, will, will definitely be. Uh, Tony Brown and John, Johnny Dwight are eligible to play in this game. They've done all the things that they needed to do, so their suspensions are over, um, and we're very happy to have them back. You know, Kentucky has played their best in the last two games that they've played. Um, you know, Mark Stoops has done a really good job of sort of finding out who they are and how they want to play, and uh, they played really well in the last two games. Uh, really good skilled players on offense, really good running backs, wide receivers. Um, you know the stats. They're explosive guys. Uh, they have pretty impressive performances to this point. Um, quarterback has played well for him, even though he had to come in for the starter. And uh, he's done a nice job, and they haven't really skipped the beat. Uh, defensively, they definitely played their very best in the last game against South Carolina. Um, played much better on third down. Got off the field, um, you know. So this is a physical team that I think it's going to be really important that we f- start fast and play physical in this game, uh, in all aspects of the game, because it's a very well coached team, and um, I think they're they're playing really well right now. Start the back with Cecil, coach, to get away from this week's game for one second. Uh, a man you've coached against every year since you came back to to Alabama. Uh, Les Miles, you won't be coaching against him this year, and I wondered what uh, what your reaction to, to that situation was. Well, first of all, uh, Les Miles is one of the most respected colleagues um, in terms of the rivalry that we've had, the competition that we've had, the great teams that they've had. Um, you know, I, I kind of hate it that a man wins a national championship, wins two SEC titles, and um, doesn't make it through the season. Um, I'm, 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 it is what it is, but I have tremendous amount of respect for Les Miles and what he was able to accomplish there, the number of wins he had. I mean, this is very similar to, you know, Georgia firing Mark Rick when he averages 10 wins a season. So, uh, you know, I guess this is the time that we live in. Uh, everybody needs to know that, but uh, it doesn't minimize to any degree the, the amount of respect that uh, we have for the job that Les Miles did at LSU and the, the great competitive teams that he's had there for a long, long time and the amount of success that he's had. And we certainly wish him and his family well. Back over here to the side with John I want to ask you about Joshua Jacobs, just kind of when he got on your recruiting radar and then also what's he done to, to kind of earn your trust and, and game time? Well, I think that we were searching last year and recruiting for running backs because we knew we had a little bit of a depth issue losing, you know, the top two guys last year, Derek and Kenyon. So, um, you know, we found Josh a little late in recruiting, but we were happy that we were able to get him. We were very impressed with him. And uh, I, th- I think that this is 
you know, typically a, a guy that shows great maturity and understanding and very instinctive as a football player. And I think it shows up in his play and how he plays. And it certainly has showed up in how he's developed to be able to play. So um, hopefully, you know, he'll continue to improve and get better and uh, he'll be able to uh, be productive as we move forward. Speaking of Tony Brown, now that he is back, um, how, how quickly can you work him into the game plan and what can he bring to the secondary? Well, I think right now, you know, Tony's got to work on, and I told him this, you know, developing, you know, trust in his teammates and the coaches. And uh, he certainly has the ability to play. Uh, he's been an outstanding special teams player for us. So I think that's the first thing you'll see. Um, and then, you know, we'll work him back into the positions that he's played in the past, corner, star. Uh, and, you know, see if he can, you know, contribute in any way uh, to make us stronger. I know it's going to add a little depth in an area where we don't have a lot of depth, so uh, that will definitely be helpful. But I also think it will create some competition with some of the other players that um, may be helpful as well. Just wanted to ask you about Minka's progress from last year to this year and, and just what his role is and – and how he leads that group in the back side. Well, Minka's last year did a great job for us. I mean, really showed a tremendous amount of maturity for a freshman, a true freshman, to go in and play in a lot of the circumstances that he had to play in against a very good competition and, and did a really good job. Um, I think he's a lot more confident. I think he um, knows – his knowledge and experience is so much better. He knows exactly uh, what's expected of him, um, and and I think he's performed, you know, extremely well in all these games in the beginning of the season. And um, you know, hopefully, we'll be able to he'll be able to continue to improve and be a really good playmaker for us in the future. Jonah Williams has been one of your players of the week three out of the four weeks. That can be a position that can be difficult to play well at as a young player. What, what have you seen for him through four games? Well, he's just technically very sound. He's very athletic. Uh, he's a very smart guy um, and just does a really good job of executing. Uh, another one of those guys that can take what you sort of coach him and um, bring it to the table and do it on a consistent basis. I think, you know, he's a fine young man. Football's important to him. He's got a lot of pride in performance and uh, he's made a tremendous amount of improvement from the spring to the beginning of the season till now, and um, we certainly need, needed that at that position, and he certainly provided it for us. In the middle with Michael. How did Jalen Hurts look throwing the ball down the field on Saturday, and what does he still need to do to improve? Jalen did a nice job in the game. I still think it's a, a matter of you know a couple reads here and there that um, we just need to clean up with them. I don't think there's anything – physically wrong with the way he throws the ball and each week he has gotten progressively better and we've had less and less and less of you know those types of things which is the progress that we want to see and um, you know hopefully you know we'll be able to continue to build on and uh, I know it's very important to him uh, he's a works really hard very conscientious a really good person good leader well respected by his teammates and and nobody wants to get it right more than him, and that's why I think he'll get it right. Coach, obviously the defense is, is played stellar. Obviously the game against Ole Miss, they put up points, but they got defensive scores as well. Just your overall assessment of that unit, and did you expect them to play at this level this earlier in the season? Well, I, I guess that, um, you know, the big question we had going into this season was how much depth do we have on defense? How would we be able to sustain the season? And um, I think in three games this year, the defense played really well. And in one game this year, we didn't play well at all. And I think that um, that was the most challenging game offensively we've had to this point uh, because of the skill level of their players and their quarterback. And we, we didn't respond to it. And um, I, th I think you have to respond every week to really be good. And when you have the big challenges, that's when you step up uh, and play well. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, we can improve on that and play with more consistency is, you know, basically what I would say. And 
Uh, guys don't need to be getting casual about what they're doing. They need to bear down when we're playing the best teams. And obviously everybody we play here for the next long time that I see uh, is pretty daggone good. Stoops today in his press conference talked a little bit about uh, being recruited by you in high school. What, if anything, do you remember from that? Well, that was my recruiting area, and um, Mark was played at Cardinal Mooney, and I think I was playing at Michigan State at the time. And you know, I, my history with the Stoops goes way back. You know, their their dad was a defensive coordinator at Cardinal Mooney. Don Butchie was the head coach, uh, who was a really good friend of mine there, and that was a great program. Um, Bo Pelini, I recruited him when he was in high school, and um, then you know Mark came along, and all the Stoops guys went to Iowa, and Uncle Bob, who is still a good friend, uh, was the coach at South High, where we recruited Garcia Lane to Ohio State. So there was just a lot of connections there with the family, and you know Mark was a really good player, and um, you know we we really tried to get him, but we didn't. And Hayden Fry had that family pretty pretty wrapped up. Go on the back, a couple more back with Joe. Hey, Coach, uh, you referenced some of the high points of Les Miles' resume, and you also referenced Coach Rick. Um, in both cases where these men lost their jobs, a lot of people have brought up what you've accomplished here at Alabama and how that's, in some cases, raised the bar, raised the expectations for a lot of coaches throughout the league. Do you think that's fair? Well, it's not really for me to say, you know, one way or the other. Um, you know, we feel fortunate to uh, have the kind of team here that we have at Alabama that's created an atmosphere and environment where our players have a chance to be successful personally, academically, and athletically, and I think we've created a lot of value for our players. And because of that, we've had some really, really good players. And um, those guys have competed well and played well, and uh, we've had some great coaches, and I think – because of the team that we have from our administration to our athletic administration to the players and coaches that we have, all those things contribute. Uh, it's not just about, you know, who the head coach is. And um, I think that's why we've been successful. And, you know, it's a challenge for us to continue to try to be successful. And I can't really comment on anybody else's standard for what they want to try to accomplish or what they want to try to do. What have you seen from him, him as a head coach? He's another one of those coaches that's kind of uh, gotten a lot of heat uh, from outside. What have you just seen from his coaching career there at Kentucky and, and thoughts on him? Well, I think Kentucky has really good players, and all I know is they're a lot better now, and every year that I've seen them, they've gotten better and better and better. And um, So I think Mark has done a really good job. I know he works hard at recruiting. Uh, he's probably in, in, in improved the, the players relative to uh, what they're playing with on the field. Uh, and, you know, I think that the continuity in program sometimes gets overlooked. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you got a better chance to build in the long run if you're not constantly making changes. And I think people, you know, sometimes overlook that. So I think Mark has done a really, really good job. And, um, you know, I, I think there are really – you know, competitive physical team uh, that is going to be a real challenge for us.